So in today's video, I want to build off what I was discussing yesterday. Namely, how much should you care about other people's opinions uh, when you're doing any sort of creative endeavor? And whether you should try to cater to uh, a big, huge audience when you're putting out a product or um, you know a piece of art or whatever it is you're trying to create. So I want to give you an example about the you know the point that I was trying to discuss. Basically, that you need to sort of err, I think, on the side of not caring about what other people think when you're trying to do something new or something creative. And I just thought that I would share one example uh, of a writer, a contemporary writer, who I think is is taking this almost you know to an extreme. And so this is a this is a couple wrote a couple books today. This is a series of a Norwegian writer called Carl Ova Gnosgard. And and he's written a series of six, it's a six volume sort of fictional slash autobiography about about his life, essentially is all it's about. In book number one, A Death in the Family. He talks about in like in in excruciating detail about the death of his own father, uh, who who essentially became an alcoholic later on in his life, and he used to be a school teacher, and then he, he sort of just as uh, you know his family lets him just kind of drink himself to death, and it, and it's it's a really sad book, um, but the. And I, I, you know, I can't really relate to that. I grew up in a really stable, loving home. Um, but he's able to f talk about his experience and his life in such a personal way. And he's able to put in details from his life in such a way that it becomes universal. And, and what I mean by that is that I think that um, when you're able to be so true with yourself, uh, and you're able to discuss all the things that we often don't share in public, and they especially don't talk about in like Scandinavian Scandinavian cultures in Norway. Uh, you know, very taboo subjects about like family details, secrets, that type of thing. When you when you're willing and you're able to put that out there in a way um, that is so true and honest, I really believe that you're you're able to get as close as you can to, to creating some type of, of universal story that people can relate to. And that's why this these books have become, you know, really a, a, a literary phenom. You know, this this look at look how thick these are. These are like 500 to 600 pages each. And this is only four of six that I've got. And they, I, I'm, I've never really waited for a book in translation before. You know, it's written in Norwegian, and I, I literally can't wait until uh, the fifth volume comes out, I think, in March 2016. But while he was writing this book, and this is, why, this is what I really want to get to, you know, he's telling all of these really brutal details about, like in this one, he talks about how his, his first marriage sort of fell apart, and and then he meets a new uh, wife in Sweden and then he has two kids and he thought that like that would make him all better, make him happy and help him create things that uh, that he believed in. But then, you know, he goes on for pages and pages and pages about like taking his kids to nursery school and changing the diapers and how that is just like this horrible thing. And. And you know, one day, you know, obviously his kids are gonna wake up and you know probably read this book later on in life and say, "Oh my God, my dad was a huge asshole. He didn't even like taking care of me." But the the, the cool thing is that I I think uh, about this story is that he he's able to to be so brutally real about what it is you know being a being a man in in Norway and Sweden in you know 2010 or whenever he wrote it that. I can relate to it, you know, as a 29 year old guy in Canada who doesn't have any kids, but he's been in a couple of relationships in my life. Um, and he's just, he's able to, to blur this boundary between reader and author and subject and um, author, you know what I'm saying? Like fictional character and the person who's actually writing it ver and, and then the person who's writing it and the person who's reading it those ba those boundaries become so murky and so when Nosgard was writing these books 
he obviously didn't tell his family about the details that he's pouring all of their secrets and, and these really horrible details into his novels. Um, I think he kept that until the end when he was done. And then he shared people knowing that it was going to cause a rift. And, and I think part of his fa- like some people in his family haven't talked to him since he published these books. Um, so it's caused a big rift. But while he was writing them, the only way that he said he could keep going and he could believe that what he was doing was worthwhile is that he called up uh, one of his best friends each night and he would read him what he had written that day. And then his friend would listen and give him little bits of feedback. But essentially, he was just kind of patting him on the back and saying, Carlo, you keep going with this. You're doing a good job. And it's just readable. And next thing you know, this guy freaking wrote all of this. Over. If, if, you, if you put yourself out there in a way that is honest and real, people will buy into it. And people, people, will, people will literally spend 20 hours sitting there hanging out with you, reading your book, uh, if you do a good enough job at it. So uh, I'm going to put some info about Karl Ove Nosgaard in the description down below. This has been, you know, reading this stuff has been some of the, maybe one of the craziest sort of reading experiences of my life. Because I feel like I know this other person, uh, but I haven't met him yet. And whenever he does readings, people sort of come up to him and like bear their soul because he's basically done that to them over the course of their books. And then he's just sitting there probably really uncomfortable. Um, But that's what you get. You know, what you put out into the world often comes back to you. And uh, I think he's a fascinating writer. And this is part, this the reason I'm doing this video is to teach you a little bit about his work. But also, uh, you know, to find the fact that, you know, if you are real and you're true about yourself, you can reach a point, I believe, that you become almost, um, you become, you start talking about everybody and not just yourself. Is the particular, I think, if you get right down to its essence, it can become part of the universal. So there you go. Thanks for watching. If you like these videos, hit subscribe, give me a thumbs up, and uh, have a good day.